Hello, I'm Jeremy Clopton, a director with Upstream Academy and your guide for the Launching Data Analytics program. As you prepare for the boot camp, this online tutorial and workbook are designed to help you prepare. We'll address five key areas you need to have considered before we meet in person. Analytics in your firm, defining your service line, assessing the competitive landscape, identifying your team, and technology considerations. This tutorial and workbook are designed to guide you in making some decisions, gathering key information, and preparing yourself for the boot camp. When we meet in person, we'll talk more about building the full plan you will use to launch your data analytics service line. Both the workbook and the tutorial are designed for your launch team. This is the team of individuals responsible for launching and leading your analytics service line. They don't need to be technical experts, though they do need to understand what analytics can do and have the leadership ability to lead a service line. For some firms, that will be a couple people. For others, it may be three or four. Just know this tutorial is designed for the launch team, and when I mention you, it's the launch team I'm referring to. With that, let's get started. Also throughout the course of the workbook, I have pre-populated answers to many of the prompts that are in there. This has been done through the lens of a small to mid-sized firm with expertise in three key industries. Those are there for an example for you as you complete the workbook to help guide you along the way. As you go, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me directly at jeremyc at upstreamacademy.com. I'm happy to help answer any questions you have along the way as we look to prepare you for this on-site boot camp. With that, let's get started. Section 1 of this workbook and online tutorial is focused on analytics and your firm. What we're trying to do here is to figure out the big picture reason as to why it is that you've start, decided to start a service line, what you're looking to accomplish through that service line, and visualizing what it will look like to either be successful or to ultimately fail in that service line. We're going to start off with why and determining your why. There's a really good chance that if your firm is invested in sending you to the Launching Data Analytics program, they have a reason for wanting to launch an analytic service line within the firm. As members of the launch team, it is critically important that you understand that reasoning. I would encourage you to start a conversation with either your managing partner, the leader or leaders that signed you up for this or approved your attending this program, or other members of management or firm leadership to determine what exactly are their expectations for having an analytic service line within the firm. What exactly are they looking to achieve? What are they hoping that this analytic service line will bring to the firm? Now, I've given you some prompts within the workbook there to help you start that conversation. Those are just prompts. They're examples. You can use whatever you'd like to start that discussion. Just know that you need to have an open and honest discussion with the key firm leaders to determine what it is that you're trying to accomplish and the expectations of the service line. I can tell you from experience that every firm leader will likely have a slightly different expectation and understanding of what an analytic service line will do for the firm. If you're going to be leading this service line, you need to know what those expectations are so you can prepare accordingly. The examples that I've given you here in red are from the lens of a firm that's fairly small to mid-size that has three key industries of focus. And you can see that if we look at the reasons that, our, that my firm that I've used in this example is launching a service line, it includes adding new service offerings to help us get into new markets, enhancing existing service offerings for our existing clients, demonstrating a commitment to technology and innovation, as well as creating a new revenue stream. Now again, those are fairly big picture goals. They're not real granular. In fact, they're not detailed yet but they are the why. They're the expectation and the reason that we're starting this service line. That's what you need to come away from before you do anything else in this workbook. You need to come away from those discussions with your key leaders in your firm, understanding why it is that you have embarked on this journey of launching an analytic service line. The second section of this opening part of the workbook is the service line goals. And the service line goals is really starting to get a better picture of the short-term and long-term expectations of the service line. Now, I know there's a lot of information out there on goal setting and using the SMART goal framework, and we'll get into more of the details of how we're going to accomplish the goals and creating action as we get to the actual on-site boot camp. At this point, what I want you to do is just categorize them into maybe two big buckets of short-term 
and long-term goals and get some of those down in the workbook so we can start to understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Generally speaking, the goals are going to be either financially related, personnel related, perhaps they're business development focused, or it could be leadership based as well. As I go to the second page here, you can see that the goals that I've used for this hypothetical firm in the short term are to gener is to generate $400,000 in new revenue over the first 12 months of the service line and acquire 10 new clients specifically through our data analytics services. In the long term, ultimately what we would like to do is we'd like to have a service line that's large enough that we can create a new path to partner and also develop firm leadership capabilities in our employees. Again, neither of those would probably meet all of the criteria of the SMART goal framework, but they are short-term and long-term goals that can help us start to see where it is that we want to go. For some of you that are attending the bootcamp, you may have much more specific goals and that's spectacular if you do. If you're still early on in this process, this is to try to help us figure out what are we trying to accomplish and how are we going to meet those expectations of firm leaders through the accomplishment of these goals. Now the final area of the opening section of the workbook is planning for success and failure. And one of these things you've probably done quite a bit of, and that's planning for success and visualizing what that looks like. What I wanna do here though is to challenge you to look at this from two different perspectives. The first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna visualize what a successful launch of the analytic service line will look like, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at it from the negative side and say, okay, why would it have failed? But let's focus on outcome one first, and that's success. What I want you to do is I want you to visualize that you are 18 months into the future and that you have successfully launched your analytic service line. Now I want you to take a look back over the prior 18 months and start to figure out what went well. Now you're gonna know your firm better than I am or better than anybody else that's attending the on-site bootcamp, so you probably have a pretty good feeling for what leads to success or ultimate failure of new initiatives within your firm. It's at this point that you need to start to identify what led to success. What do you need to do to be successful? Again, through the lens of the hypothetical firm here, you can see that I've said that we remained focused on our key metrics that defined success. For us, that meant revenue per project, our project count, and our overall health of our pipeline. We generated interest internally at the firm, which allowed us to do better business development because we had all firm leaders marketing our services to their clients. Our team remained focused not just on learning software, but also the ability to identify and solve key client problems. And then by creating annuity work and raving fans early on in the service line, we were able to get that perpetual service line and that annuity service line going very early on. And by doing that, we were able to be successful. Again, you need to think about in your firm, what is going to create success? And our goal here is to get a list of the items that lead to success within your firm so that we can start to plan how we're going to get each of those events or those actions to occur. Now, the second outcome that I want you to look at is failure. And I realize that we don't typically focus on this because we want to be the optimist and we want to see, okay, what would it look like to succeed? Beginning with the end in mind, if we're, our end is success, we're always looking to that. But there's a lot of literature out there that suggests by visualizing what it would look like to fail, we're able to better plan for the roadblocks that we may encounter along the way. Again, this is an area for, uh, of experience that I have where I can tell you if you know what ultimately leads new initiatives to fail within your firm, you're going to be better positioned to address those, those events or those actions. So again, I want you to go 18 months out. Now you're 18 months out and the service line has not been successful. It didn't work. We've decided we're going to scrap this idea. We're just not going to go there anymore. What I want you to do is I want you to look back over the 18 months and what were the key events or actions that happened that ultimately led to the failure of the analytic service line. Some of that even can be strategy related. So through my hypothetical firm, you can see that we failed because we didn't get buy-in from firm leaders at the very beginning. Since they weren't bought into the concept, they weren't willing to help us, they weren't willing to help us market to their clients, we didn't get the support that we needed. 
You can also see that we failed in our internal marketing efforts. We weren't successful there. We weren't getting the referrals that we needed. Again, it wasn't allowing us to get that market penetration that we needed with our existing client base, which is one of the easiest client bases to have traction in. As we scroll down, we can see that we also focus too much on large one-time projects rather than focusing on that recurring work. We knew that we needed 400,000 in revenue to, to meet our goal over the first 12 months. But instead, we focused on trying to land two $200,000 projects rather than focusing on some small projects that were more annuity type work that would allow us to get to that mark. And if one didn't work, we could get another project to make up for it. And then finally, we didn't do a good job of demonstrating expertise in the market. Therefore, we, we weren't able to use thought leadership to, to build that credibility. Now, those are just some examples. Again, Throughout the course of this entire opening section of the preparatory workbook, what we're trying to do is help you understand what analytics means within the context of your firm. Again, why do you want to launch an analytics service line within the firm? What are the goals of that service line? And then finally, if that service line is to be successful, what do you need to do along the way that's going to lead to that success? And on the flip side, if there is something that is going to derail the launch of this service line within your firm, what are those things that are likely to kill the initiative before it has any chance of success? If we can start to get that figured out and you can prepare that information before you get to the boot camp, now we'll be able to start to assess and build out a strategy for launching your analytic service line within your firm. That's section one. Let's move on to section two, which is defining the service line. Once we know what our expectations are and what it is that we're trying to accomplish with analytics in our firm, now we can start to build out our definition of what the service line actually looks like. We're gonna start with what type of service line we want to launch. And in my view, there's typically two approaches that firms take with a brand new service line, especially one that's focused on analytics. It's either an integrated service line or it's an independent service line. As I think about these, our independent service line is going to be one that we would list under the Our Services section on our website. If you would put that on your website and it's going to serve clients explicitly as a standalone service line, that would be more of an independent service line. That doesn't mean that you can't serve the firm internally as well. It just means that the service line is focused on its own clients and serving those clients first as well as helping others within the firm succeed. An integrated service offering would be one where analytics is focused specifically on an existing service within your firm and helping it succeed or enhance that service. For many of you, I, I would expect that you are likely to launch an independent service line rather than an integrated. Again, keeping in mind, the independent service line will serve both its own clients as well as the firm itself and maybe other existing clients of the firm through other services that the firm provides. In my example here, we have that our service line is going to be independent and it is listed as a definitive service under the Our Services section of the website. It will plan to stand on its own, it will have its own clients, but at the same time, it's going to serve the firm as well. We're gonna provide value to our clients through independent projects and we're gonna provide value internally through the improvement and the enhancement of existing service offerings. In fact, we may go so far as to incorporate and integrate the analytics services into our firm's management as well. That's something that we need to figure out though at the start, what type of service line do you want? Again, independent provides you more options. Integrated is gonna be that more narrowly focused there. I would encourage you if you have the ability and you have the, if you have the capacity within your firm to consider an independent service offering as it relates to your analytics service line. The second thing that we need to consider in defining the service line is what is the practice area within the firm that will ultimately own the analytics service line? Every firm is gonna be a little bit different in this regard. Some will have it in general consulting, some will have it in risk management, maybe forensics, due diligence, it could be in your accounting outsourcing or accounting services area. It's going to vary from firm to firm, but you need to determine who ultimately within the firm is going to own 
this service line, where will it be housed? As, as you consider the financials, where is it going to roll up? For my hypothetical firm, again, I've selected the general consulting practice of the firm is where that's going to be housed. We're not a firm that's big enough to have a lot of other uh, smaller practice areas, so we're going to call it just part of general consulting, and that's where we're going to report our results up to. Once we've identified the type of service in the practice area, now we're going to get into defining the service line itself. And for this, we're going to focus on three key elements, industry, solution, and delivery. And once we determine our industry, our solution, and our delivery, that's going to start to shape what our service line will look like. Now, let's start with industry. There are a lot of industries out there that firms serve. Some are going to be data rich, some are gonna be data savvy, some are gonna be data averse. That should not necessarily guide all of your decision making around what industry or industries you're going to serve. Instead, you should start to focus on what industries do you think you can have the most impact in and that you can help the best. Many of you already have industries in which you are experts. You already have the expertise, you already have the reputation, you already have the credibility. You probably also have industries that are willing to pay for consulting and advisory services, and that may differ slightly from where you have expertise. And then finally, a third aspect to consider here is where do your A and B clients sit? Your A and B level clients, your best clients, are likely going to be in certain industries. Now, as you start to figure out what your service line looks like, we're really looking for the intersection of these three things. We're looking for the industries in which we have expertise, the industries that are willing to pay for that additional work, and the industries where our A and B clients are located because the industries with our A and B clients are the industries we are going to want to focus on largely because typically it's the A and B clients that are looking for those advisory services. You'll probably see some overlap between being willing to pay for consulting and A and B clients within your industries. Ideally, that's also where you have that expertise, but it's possible that it may not be exact. And you can see here in my hypothetical firm example, we have the most expertise in food and beverage followed closely by agriculture then construction. That said, when it comes to those that are willing to pay for consulting, food and beverage is near the bottom. Now, that's just as a percentage of total industry revenue. It could be that they, we still have a lot of our revenue that comes from consulting and food and beverage, but as a percentage of total revenue for that industry, it's lower than the other three. And then as we step back and look at it again, we can see that most of our A and B clients, if we look at it as a percentage, most are in agriculture followed by food and beverage than construction. As I'm thinking about launching an analytic service line, and I look through these three things here for my hypothetical firm, agriculture is likely the industry, if I was going to pick one, which I would encourage you to do at the start, the industry that where I am first going to launch my analytic service line. That's where my A and B clients are, that's an industry that's paying for consulting, and that's one of our industries where we have the most expertise. Now, for your firm, it may be a slightly different. It may not be as easy to determine as, as this chart is for my hypothetical firm, but we want to make sure that we are finding that sweet spot of where we have expertise, where we have great clients, and where we have clients that are willing to pay for consulting. Because if they're not willing to pay for it, it's going to be really hard to launch a successful service line. Once you've identified your industry, now you need to start to figure out your solution. We know what industry we can help, or we know what industries we may be able to help, but now we need to start to figure out what are the solutions that we can provide to that industry or to those industries. Again, we're gonna take a, a three-pronged approach to this. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start to identify what are the business problems faced by our A and B level clients. Do we have specific issues that they have brought to us that we can start to help them with. One thing you may do to, to do this is to step back and talk to your partners or leaders within the firm that deal with your A and B level clients and start to ask them, what problems are your clients talking about? 
you should have a pretty good understanding of that as it is. The second step here is start to figure out, aside from our A and B level clients, not, let's not just focus on those, but what's the most common request that we get as it relates to business problems? And I don't mean either audit or tax, but just as general business problems, what's the most common request that we get? And then the third thing is, you have a team of employees with expertise within your firm. Especially if you have specialized services, do you have a specific problem that your team is very well positioned and eager and passionate about solving for your clients? Do you have a business problem that you've always said, we really could help our clients with this, but we don't really have the service or the service line yet to do it? So what I want you to do is I want you to create again three lists here. First, your business problems faced by your A and B clients. Second, the most requested business problem. And then third, what are the specific problems that your team, exclusive maybe of your, uh, of your clients, but specifically that your team thinks that they could solve and take to market? Again, we're going to be looking for overlap here. In my hypothetical firm, some of the business problems faced by our A and B clients, first one is forecasting supply and demand. And that's both in food and beverage as well as agriculture. Second is actually figuring out how do we use all of our information to better plan the planting and harvest seasons. How do we ha address fraud prevention and detection? Food and beverage is a big one for us. And then how do we improve productivity? And that really spans all three uh, of our industries there. But if we look at the most common business requests that we get, it's how do we understand the financial information? Especially in our food and beverage and our agriculture, for my hypothetical firm, our business owners, they don't necessarily get the financial side of it. They know how to run their business as well, but they don't necessarily understand the, the financials. And then secondly, we always get asked, how do we understand the link between business process and financial performance? How can we improve one to improve the other? And what is the impact they have? And then finally, the specific problems that my hypothetical firm's team is ready to solve is fraud prevention and detection efforts, specifically around retail food and beverage. We're really good at productivity and business processes, and then following on that, linking business process to financial performance and helping clients understand that. As I now start to look across that, I can see that if we have our most common business problems is understanding the link between business process and performance, we have a team that's great at productivity process and linking that back to financial performance, we can tie that to our A and B level client problems of supply and demand, planting and harvest, as well as productivity. We may also say, well, we've got some fraud prevention and detection specifically there. We've got some fraud prevention and detection problems faced by our A and B clients. That may be a secondary service that we want to look at as well. So for us, we're looking for that overlap. I can see that my industries are probably, I'm again, focused on agriculture here. As I look at my problems here as it relates to solution, I'm going to say that within the agriculture industry, I'm going to create a solution that will help business owners link their business processes, including planting and harvest, supply and demand, and how I can link those processes and how efficient those processes are to their financial performance. Now we're starting to get a solution. The third element is delivery. How are we going to deliver this service? Now, for some, it could be just ad hoc analysis and reporting. Somebody calls you up and says, hey, we need you to do a project. We're going to send you some data. Can you get us the results in a few weeks? That's ad hoc. It's one time. Again, not very annuity, but it's one time. It could be that you're doing ongoing analysis and reporting where you're working hand in hand with the business owner, with your client. They're getting you data maybe every month, every week, every quarter. It's going to depend, but it's ongoing analysis and reporting. That's that annuity type work. It could be on demand. They say, hey, we're going to have our data available. We're going to be sending it to you, and we're going to call you up when we have questions. We need that on-demand type of analysis. Or it could even be that you're going to provide advisory services to your clients. Maybe they already have analytics as well, and they're trying to figure out how to better use those analytics internally. So maybe you're going to do some more advisory type work. Specifically with my hypothetical firm here, what I would say is our primary goal will be to deliver services, analytics services, through ongoing analysis and reporting. If we're getting data on a routine basis, we can better assess business processes within the agriculture industry. 
We can better report on those processes and we can tie that to the financial performance of the organization. We may do some ad hoc analysis and reporting, especially if that helps us get our foot in the door. We may do a little bit of on-demand analysis where it, de- where it seems appropriate, but those are going to be our secondary service offerings. As we evaluate our industries and our solutions and our client base, working with them hand-in-hand hand and being that trusted advisor is really the service that we look to provide. So for us, it would be ongoing analysis and reporting. As you evaluate defining your service line, those are the key elements that you really need to think about. Once you know if it's going to be integrated or independent, again, going back up here, integrated or independent and where it's going to sit, then you need to start to figure out for your service line, again, for launching it. It doesn't mean you can't expand later, but for launching the service line, you need to pick an industry or two for focus. What solution will you provide that industry or those industries? And then finally, how will you deliver it? Once you have that, you have a pretty good definition of the service line. That's what you need to bring to the on-site boot camp so that we can talk more about this and start to develop that strategy. Let's go on to the third section, which is the competitive landscape. Like anything else, we aren't going to launch a service line if we don't understand our competitors, so we need to start to figure out who our competitors are. At the same time, once we've done that, we're going to look at it and determine what are our differentiators within the market. First though, let's figure out who are our competitors. As I think about our competitors and figure, and determining who they may be, the first thing that I want to do is I want to look at account, other accounting firms that are in my footprint. So within my market, do we have any other firms that are providing the same type of service? As you know, there are a lot of firms that are thinking about launching an analytic service line. Some have already done it. Some are still trying to figure it out. You need to assess, do you have other accounting firms within the market that either have analytics practices or are building analytics practices and offering it within those industries that you're looking to focus on? For my hypothetical firm, we do have three other firms in the market that have expertise in the same industries and they're looking to build analytics. Only one firm, and it's in a neighboring market, has already developed analytics offerings and is, is addressing our footprint and their marketing in our area. So right now I can see that from a competitive standpoint, I'm about on par with my competitors. We're all in that development phase. It may be the first to market that gets the advantage. I do need to consider though that firm from the neighboring market. Ideally, since I'm in my footprint and they're coming in, I already have a little bit of a leg up, but I need to consider that. The other thing that I would have encourage you to do is consider other competitors within the market. Are there boutique firms, are there software companies, are there industry specific companies that may be com- that may be competing with you in this capacity? There are a lot of them out there. Sometimes it's uh, the ERP system, the accounting system, software companies that compete. It could be solution providers or software providers that maybe even provide you software. They also provide software to industry and they're a competitor. You need to start to figure out and address within the market who are those other competitors. The good news is your clients may already know because they may be asking you uh, about them and whether or not they would be a good service provider. For my hypothetical firm, we've identified two boutique firms in the market. One caters to ag, the other caters to food and beverage. Luckily for us, none of the software providers for either industry offer analytics-based services, though one of the software platforms, specifically in agriculture, does have dashboarding capabilities. Now, as I evaluate that, to me, that means that that software provider might be a potential opportunity for us to differentiate in the market. If we already know the software, can we help our clients better use their software? We can start to identify that as a potential future opportunity as well. But we know that our competitive landscape at this point is that we have three other accounting firms in our market that we're racing to the market essentially. We have a firm in a neighboring market that we're competing with at this point and trying to catch up to. And then within each of our two main industries, we have a boutique firm that we need to be considering. That's what I need you to identify the, before the boot camp. We, you don't have to have a strategy as to how you're going to compete with them. But I need you to identify what are your competitors within the market. Now, as we think about differentiators, again, this will continue to be built out as you go. 
we need to figure out what makes our firm better than these potential competitors. You should be able to do this just generally asking what makes your firm better than any other competitor, not just these specific ones, but what are your big differentiators for your firm? Now I've got in here from my hypothetical firm that our service line will differ from others in the fact that we have partners within our practice that have more than 20 years experience in each of our key industries. They're going to be working hand in hand with our analytic service line to develop the solutions that we take to market. So they're bringing that expertise and business acumen. Further, we're already the experts in these industries from an accounting standpoint. We have relationships with the trade associations and we have credibility in the industries through thought leadership. Everybody in the industry already knows us. They know that we know the financial side. That already gives us a leg up and it differentiates us because we are already considered the expert in the market. What we're doing is we're now building and expanding that expertise. That's what I need you to be de determining before you get to the boot camp as it relates to your differentiators. For the industries that you've found solutions for, that you've identified in the prior section, how do you differentiate yourself from other competitors in the market? If, it's brand, if you're brand new to an analytic service line, it's not going to be that you have an analytic service line. So we're thinking about the other differentiators that are going to help give you that credibility before you even get started. Once we've prepared that information, I need you to start looking at your team. And to launch an analytic service line successfully, you're going to have what I'm going to call four main roles. Now, I would love for every one of you to be able to fill each of these roles with different individuals and a whole big team. I realize that that's probably not realistic, and it's not possible for many of you. You may have one individual that actually plays all four of these roles for your analytic service line. The four roles that you need to have, the first one is a leader. Now, if you're on the launch team, hopefully you are one of those leaders. You need to have a team or an individual that's going to be successful and be held accountable for launching the service line. You don't necessarily have to be a partner to be the leader of the service line, though there is typically a partner level individual that's gonna have that accountability. Maybe they're an executive sponsor. Somebody that's gonna be held accountable to the other partners within the firm for the allocation and the use of the resources that's going into the service line. Even though that partner may not be on the launch team, they do need to be considered a leader. And then from there, I would add your launch team, ideally, to that leadership role. It can be more than one individual. Just know that they are the, this is where the accountability is at. Next it are your marketers and your business developers. I would say that for 95% of the firms that launch an analytics service line, it's going to be housed in the consulting side of the firm, which means you're going to be doing a lot of business development. As a consultant, and I can tell you from being a consultant the entirety of my career, business development is something that you do day in and day out. So you need to determine for this service line who is going to be responsible for the marketing and business development. Ultimately, everybody in the service line will have some role within marketing and business development, but who's going to be responsible for setting that strategy and doing both the internal and external marketing and business development initiatives and building those out? The third role will be your project manager, and if you think about a traditional attest or tax practice, this is going to be your in charge. So who is going to be leading all of the projects and doing the quality control work and review on the various analytics projects. This individual doesn't necessarily have to have the technical capacity to do the work, though keep in mind they will be reviewing it, so they have to be somewhat technically minded. Uh, they're going to not only need to be able to lead the work, review the work, but they're very likely also going to be in the role of coach and manager as it relates to junior employees. So they need to be able to coach, they need to be able to manage people, and they need to have pretty decent project management skills as you start to build out multiple projects within the service line. Hopefully you can have one or two folks at least in this capacity to start, uh, but know that you need to have at least one. And then finally, the technical specialist. This is the individual that's going to have the expertise either in software, data acquisition, cleansing, analysis, reporting, etc. 
This individual may not yet have specific technology expertise, no specific software packages, but they need to be passionate about technology. They need to be passionate about solving client problems and finding solutions for clients. What I want you to do is think through your organization, think through the firm, who would fit in each of these roles ideally. Make sure that you have a little bit of buy-in on that. You're not just going to assign people uh, a will here, but you need to be thinking about who's going to fit each of those roles if you have those individuals internally already or if these are roles that you need to recruit for. On the following page, you can see that I've got a chart for you here again to track your leaders, your marketers, and business developers, project managers, and technical specialists. For my hypothetical firm, we've got a very small uh, a small set of individuals that are going to be able to be assigned to this role. Uh, Jeremy is going to lead the effort. Uh, so essentially, Jeremy is going to sit in all four roles, going to be the, the service leader, the service line leader, the marketer and the business developer, a project manager, and a technical specialist. That's really the person in, in my hypothetical firm that has the passion for starting the analytics service line. We also have Tim that's going to be a technical specialist, can help us out quite a bit, could get in there and can do the work. And then from a marketer and a project manager standpoint, George is going to be spectacular in that role. And what we start to find out is that we have three people as it may turn out, Jeremy's going to be assigned 100% to the analytics service line. Georgia and Tim, probably about half of their time. They're also going to do other services within the firm. So that's why we've got multiple people in some of those roles. We can see where who's going to be in each of the roles, but we can also see where we're going to possibly have some challenges down the road, which is why we need to identify this. Again, if Jeremy's doing the technical work, somebody else will have to do the quality control in that project management role. Uh, if Tim is doing it, Jeremy can help. So we have to start to think about, will the staffing allow us to accomplish what we need to accomplish? This is a good thing for you to have before you get to the on-site boot camp. It's going to allow us to talk about this and develop a strategy for you to be successful. All right, section five is technology. And this will be the last section of the preparatory workbook. Again, this is going to be a software agnostic boot camp. We're not going to encourage you to buy a certain software over another. Uh, we will talk about some of the various software platforms that are out there and provide you some insight on that and help you uh, determine the software that you would like. In addition, we are going to provide you a survey as to some of the various software solution providers that we've talked to that are willing to do demos for you. Uh, we're going to provide you a survey and allow you to identify which ones you would like to see uh, and experience demos of the software. And from there, we will help introduce you uh, to representatives of the various software providers so that you can have those demos and you uh, will have an individual that you can talk to specifically that knows that you're going through this program and can help you in that capacity. You can either do those demos in advance of the boot camp, or if you'd like, you can do those after the boot camp. But watch for a survey for that. Within the preparatory workbook, section five, the first thing that you need to do is you need to start thinking about software. There are a lot of different software solutions out there that can be used for an analytic service line. What I need you to do is start to figure out, based on everything that you've done in the first four sections, what analytics means for your firm, the service that you're looking to provide, the industry that you're looking to provide the service within, your team members and their expertise and their backgrounds, what features are going to be most critical for you to be successful as it relates to the software? Does it need to have large data capacity where you can analyze millions upon millions of rows? Does it need to be fast performance wise? Do you need to have the ability to collaborate within the firm? Do you need to have the ability to collaborate with clients? Is it visualization? Is it connectivity? Is it data cleansing and acquisition? You need to think about based on the services that you have, that you've identified that you plan to provide, what are the various features of the software that you need that are most critical? For my hypothetical firm, based on the software or the services that we've decided we're gonna provide, you can see these are the features most critical to me from a software standpoint. I need to have dashboarding capabilities because if I'm going to explain how process ties to performance, I'm gonna need some visualization. I need multi-user support so my team can work on it 
and my clients can access it. I need the clients to be able to access the, the results directly. I know I'm going to have data coming from multiple sources and multiple systems, so I need a solution that will allow me to pull all of that together into one area for analysis. And then I want to have the capability for using artificial intelligence at some point in the future so that we can, when we're ready for it, we can build something that's even more robust than just us using our expertise, but where we're using uh, that advanced technology as well. Now, this is my ideal list. I may go and I may review all the software providers that are out there that are my options, and I may say, well, I find one that has 80%, one that has 90%. I'm probably going to go with the one that has the 90%, assuming they'll grow with me the way that I need. I may not find one software solution that has everything, so that's where we're going to look at that from uh, here are our ideal features, here's what we really need, and then we may have to prioritize and pick the solution that fits that list the best. Again, we will provide you a survey so we can help you make connections with various software providers that may be able uh, to give you a demo of their software to see if it meets your feature list here. From an IT infrastructure and support standpoint, I need you to know you're going to have a lot of data. If you're launching an analytic service line, you're going to be capturing a lot of data. And de depending on what service you're providing and what industry, it's going to vary as to exactly how much. Just know that it's going to be a lot more than you already have now. There's also a good chance that you may have confidential or protected information. And when I say protected, I mean regulatory, regulatorily protected, such as health information, uh, or other personally identifiable information. You need to start to think about, based on the volume of data that you're going to receive and the type of information you're going to receive, how exactly are you going to store it, transmit it, use the data, what parameters do you need, what policies do you need in place. So I want you to consider some of the following pieces of information as you start to build this out. And on the, the final day of the bootcamp, we will talk about technology uh, a fair amount. But does your firm have an in-house IT department and what are its capabilities to support an analytic service line? As it relates to your data storage, do you store data on premises or is it stored in the cloud somewhere? Is it cloud-based? As it relates to your data storage, are those systems HIPAA compliant? Are they PCI compliant? What security do you have around those systems? Can you segregate data from the general population and restrict access if needed? What about your data storage capacity? How do you transfer data, especially if it's secure data, if it's large data, you need to be thinking about that. And what are your policies around data security? I'll tell you from experience, if you get into healthcare, banking, or anything around credit cards, for instance, you have a lot uh, you have a lot more stringent requirements around data security, transmission, and storage. Clients that are entrusting you with their data are going to expect a certain level of security and compliance with these regulatory requirements depending on the type of data. That may also start to guide you as to what industries and what types of data you're willing to get into right out of the gate. You need to be thinking about this. Now, for my hypothetical firm, what I've got is that we do have an in-house ID department, although it's an IT department of one. We recognize this will be a challenge for us. They're not going to be able to support a full-on analytic service line by themselves. And currently, we do store much of our data on-premise, but we think that for our analytic service line, we may be switching to a cloud-based solution. We may go with a, a virtual uh, a virtual desktop or a virtual solution that allows us to get better performance and better storage capacity than what we have right now on in-house. We're starting to really figure that out. We don't know just yet. From our standpoint, from my hypothetical firm, we don't have any plans to house HIPAA or PCI compliant data at this time. In fact, we are making a strategic decision not to get into healthcare or banking information just yet. We may in the future uh, if we develop expertise in those industries. But right now, we don't have that need. We don't have that interest. So therefore, that's going to guide how we how we look for solutions. We may look for ones that don't have that ability now, but we may want to add that capability in the future. Now, as it relates to our data storage, segregation, and, and security, we're still evaluating that. We know that by moving from on-prem or on-premise to cloud-based, that it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, so we're going to have to evaluate how that changes 
our, our security policies. We have a pretty good start because we do already have a tax and a test practice. So we have some data security policies, though we know we're, ne we're going to need to update those if we move to a cloud-based solution. For our firm, we're still in the early phases of this. And once we get a little bit more uh, focus around our plan, we can start to evaluate some of those solutions. Finally, on the technology side, we need to start to think about what existing expertise we have. I'm not going to recommend that you go out and start to hire a bunch of data scientists or analysts yet until you know what talent you have within the firm. Now, I will say that if you aren't doing anything with analytics yet, you probably do have some people that have this expertise and this interest especially. We want to start to evaluate that and determine who are they? Where, where do they sit? Is this a possible career path for them? Can we move them into an analytics service line? As we think about it, uh, we have, you know, if we look at our expertise uh, from my hypothetical firm, uh, Jeremy is passionate about analytics and all things technology. In addition, he has experience working with our clients in a consulting capacity in key entries, so that's industry, so that's really good. Georgia has experience with multiple visualization platforms and can tell stories with data. Nate is a new employee that just joined the firm, though he's expressed some interest in technology and seems to have a pretty good grasp of emerging technologies and what can, they can offer the firm and our clients. We don't have him on our potential team just yet because he's brand new and we haven't quite evaluated what this means for a brand new team member, though we want to consider these team members. Uh, you know, we, if we have somebody that's passionate about technology, uh, we want to figure out how can they help our analytic service line. Sometimes it's those individuals that are passionate about technology that make some of the best team members uh, when it comes to our analytics service line because they already know technology, they've had it in college, and you know maybe they have some experience they can bring us. So as we evaluate technology and building the team out further in the future, you know Nate might be someone that we can consider because he can help us start to understand what are those emerging technologies that we may need to consider and we may need to think about building into our service line in the future. You'll see that Tim doesn't have any ex existing expertise here, but we know from experience that he's somebody in our firm that picks things up very quickly. He has a commitment to quality and a commitment to excellence, and he's one of our most trusted individuals. We may get him into that technical, we're gonna get him into that technician role fairly early on to help us start our practice so we start off on, on a successful direction. So that's the preparatory workbook. Uh, again, this workbook is not designed, as you can see, to help you, or it's not designed to have you make every decision that you need to make yet, or to have a final plan for how you're going to launch your service line. Instead, this is designed to help you figure out where you need to have better strategy, where we need to make some decisions when we get to the on-site boot camp, when we're in person in a few weeks, and help you be prepared for the discussions that we're going to have when we all get together on site. This is going to guide our plan. This is going to guide your strategy. This is going to help guide all of the discussions that we have. And I hope that as you go through this, you start to have a better understanding as to exactly what direction you think you may want to go when we get together and we talk about this in person. Again, if you have any questions at all as you start to complete this preparatory workbook, if you want to bounce any ideas around, if you have those questions, shoot me an email. Again, jeremyc at upstreamacademy.com. I'd be happy to help you with any questions that you have, give you some guidance along the way. I can't wait to see you all in person in a few weeks at our on-site boot camp for launching data analytics, and I look forward to talking to you more in the future. Have a great day. Thank you.